Hi guys, welcome to your Golden Kamui Season 3, Episode 8, Breakdown, Review, whatever we, we, we do here. We are talking about the episode that was Manslayer, and this week's episode was a bit of a breaker from the speed that we had started to build up as we were starting to approach the finale's point. So we have four episodes to go, and I do think the choice of putting this week's episode where it is was done intentionally just to kind of slow us up because now we're just going to have those four episodes hopefully building towards the the end goal of this season which i think we had nicely laid out for us by kiro at the end of this episode which we'll talk about when we get to that section itself i think it was quite a nice change of pace and we also get to check in with a group we haven't seen this entire season so it's quite nice to go back and check on a few characters who we haven't really seen we do open with of course everybody's absolute favorite leaky brain because there are so many leaky brain fans in the comments and there's, there's a lot of you guys I, I hear you i hear you he's standing over his skin pile his magnificent skin pile my boy asks should we be asking for a cryptographer this next line just kind of tells us how smart leaky brain really is he knows that Wilk made this for a Asirapa to decrypt, so there is no need for a cryptographer to be here because it's got to be something that a Asirapa, who isn't very young, who hasn't got that background knowledge in cryptology to be able to decipher herself. So he already knows this and obviously that's all we really see from Leaky Brain this episode. But again, whenever we do see him, we always get a reminder of how smart the guy is. That is your little weekly check-in with Leaky Brain. Let's now go back to a nice little flashback of Asirapa and Sugimoto. I really do miss those guys. I kind of almost want to put bets on them not going face to face at the end of the finale and not meeting up. I just, I've got a little feeling that it may not happen just because of where everybody is at the moment and there is only four episodes to go. This little flashback reminds us of when Asirapa is drawing down the tattoos from one of the prisoners they managed to catch and she asks Sugimoto for some help trying to read symbols on in the circle so th the patterns on these tattoos are very, very iconic I've seen a lot of merchandise of people just selling the tattoos hats for the tattoos lots of that going on but with the lines as well there are these little circles where there are these symbols and it just turns out they are just letters so Sugimoto helps her work out that one is a U we do learn that Wilk actually told us Surapa to go to school and study, which is so subtle. This line is subtle. I mean, it could mean absolutely nothing, but at the same time, it does give us a little hint that maybe Wilk wanted a Surapa to learn the Japanese writing system just so that obviously she could decrypt what we're about to go into. The end game, essentially. I do Occasionally, I do just forget that there is this end game where there is the tattoos and there is the fact that there is gold somewhere. So it is at some point going to come down to the crypt in these tattoos. We do get some nice little bit of information that Asirapa's people have no written language, so they don't write anything down. Wilk telling her to go study is probably going to be a little grain of rice that we're going to pick up later at a later date, which is going to be very important. And it's just the way that this beautifully trans transitions into Sugimoto, who is looking at Ganmite's drawings. So he has the tattoos from Ganmite. It does kind of raise the question that is it really just the Surapa who is able to break this code? Is nobody else really in a position to break it? We get a little bit of fun before we go into our main chunk of the episode where Koito calls Sugimoto a moron. He won't be able to decipher anything because he's a moron. And it's just the way Sugimoto just retaliating in his little fun ways, telling him that he has figured something out, but he's not going to tell anybody. Absolutely love it. So this week's episode follows Team Dick Sensei. We haven't seen Dick Sensei this season i think we briefly touched base episode one and it was a very brief moment where we see them outside the prison when we kind of touch base with them they are still in japan they're not too far from where leaky brain is we are following obviously hijikata and nagakura gramps is trying to find out what the metal i thought it was metal it's not it's, it turns out to be a beak he's trying to find out what an item he found in the hidden cell of the prison is so he's going around asking all these people if they know what this item is and we also get to see dick sensei asking a guy called <sighs> take a breath take a breath kiryushi Kiryushi, I believe that's probably his name. Close as you're going to get. He turns out to be part of the Kushiro Ainu and they end up going to stay with him. He is the one who is able to tell them about the beak and it is the beak of a seabird. And this seabird is hunted mainly around the 
town of Nemuro, which obviously acts as our next location for Team Dick Sensei. We haven't seen them in a while, so it is nice that we're getting a bit of a break from our main two teams. We're trying to slow the pace down just a little bit, I think. The pacing of Golden Kamui has always been something that I think is done really, really well. No, it's never rushed. It's never an anime which rushes by. It's done just with enough pacing where we do get little sidelines little bits nuggets of information thrown in as well so this episode we are hunting down a prisoner named yoshiro and he is the one with the nickname manslayer i was wrong last episode so it wasn't anything to do with sophia it is yoshiro who is the manslayer these guys are gonna go find him and he has got tattoos kimayushi is paid to take them down to nemuro and go and find the nemuro i knew now we end up taking a flash all the way to Nemro where we meet the Manslayer and the Manslayer is old. I think they initially said that obviously he killed in his heyday he was doing all the manslaughtering that was 30 years ago. He, he ends up settling down and he goes to stay with the Ainu in Nemro. so he's with the Nemro Ainu. He ends up with those guys for a bit. So he marries an Ainu woman where his wife is kidnapped and to get her back, kills the guys who kidnapped her and then ends up back in the prison. And that is where he obviously gets his tattoos, where he ends up escaping prisons. To be fair, sometimes I have joked that the Golden Kumi needs to rename itself the prison break. It is another prison break where he escapes prison and he now has spent his days working at this fishery in Nemuru. We also get a little bit of information that there are many groups who are hired by the families of the people that Yoshiro murdered to go and get revenge, to go and assassinate Yoshiro. And we're told that there are quite a few. So we do zone in on one of the groups in particular, but there is a lot. And I think there's three different groups in this episode alone who are trying to kill him. This nice little sequence of just trying to show us how old Yoshiro is and that his time is running out where we do even get to see him walking out into the ocean where he has to be brought back by one of the men who work at the fishery with him he even says are you sino or are you suicidal and it kind of looks like we're inferring that he wants to die before he goes sino and he doesn't remember anymore and he doesn't even know when death comes he kind of wants to die before he forgets everything this episode is quite a hard hitter for the main part so it does focus on the older members of the golden kamui where obviously hijikata is old he is obviously former shinsengumi although he still withholds that duty so we are following a lot more of the older members this episode we get an episode which is quite touching where we focus in on age and how age affects people we do get a sad moment where yoshiro is told by the fishery he's told that you need to leave whilst you can still walk and they even said is there anybody who can come and get you and the sad thing is this guy doesn't actually have anybody his wife died and it does seem that there is nobody who can come and get him he had lodgings at the fishery so he's now being thrown out of those lodgings and he's just been told to do your own thing go and go and take care of yourself but he's old that is when the first group of assassins arrive to find the manslayer and they manage to identify Yoshiro. We also get a flash of those tattoos so we know it is the same guy. The men go in for a revenge kill where we get something quite interesting happen where we get introduced to Yoshiro's kind of state of mind in a sense where we get these little blocks and everybody transforms into something a little bit different. So he sees people dressed up in that slightly more traditional manner from almost what I presume is his manslaying days. So he sees everybody younger because so, when Hijikata arrives, he sees him as the young Hijikata who is still a Shinsengumi. It's almost like a muscle memory by this point where he goes in and he breaks the guy's hand. It's just this snap where suddenly this old guy who looks senile suddenly goes in for this attack and he snaps the guy's wrists and he manages to cut open all of their feet with the axe. I, it does, I think I can liken it to muscle memory where his body is probably so used to it, it kind of moves on its own. And he tells them, you need to get in line because there's lots of people who want to kill him. And that is when our Shizengumi Hijikata arrives, so Gramps arrives. He, he tells the assassins that they need to kind of get in line because he's head of the line to kill Yoshiro. Interesting because we see how Yoshiro sees him and we do get introduced to younger Hijikata. Season 3 has sent, spent a bit of time looking at the younger versions of the characters we're following. So it's a very clever way to incorporate young Hijikata and his Shizengumi outfit into it. And... And to be fair, the guy did look good in his younger days. He, it's quite nice to see him. It's not a flashback we're doing it as. We're just kind of seeing 
how Yoshiro now sees everything because every time it flicks to him, he's seeing everybody back in these kind of traditional outfits. Another group of assassins arrives and it turns into a bit of a gunfight where you can see Hitchcatter trying to shoot them down. And Dick Sensei to the rescue has his moments where he goes in and kind of bulldozes people through a wall. Again, we get to see how Yoshiro sees everybody around him. We see younger Yoshiro, so we get to see him as a young man. We also, every time he kind of goes into, I'm going to call it Yoshiro vision, it's a very contrasted vision we see. So everything is darker, there's very high shadows, it's quite contrasty. We see him draw a sword and then he literally goes in to deliver this big ass whooping in quite some style for an old man of his age. So, so he's surrounded by all these old buildings, these very old style buildings. Everybody around him is wearing that traditional outfits from the period. And there's a lot of colour popping. If you guys follow all my episodes and you saw last night's episode, which would have been Moriarty, colour popping is only something I get to talk about in Moriarty. So it's quite nice I get to drag it across, tell you about colour popping in this anime as well. You can see the moon is blood red and everything around it has colour. There's no colour apart from that one colour being represented. Colour popping is where you just generally, generally drain the image of a colour, of a picture, and you leave one colour, mainly as one colour, just represent something. I normally use this image of mine with the apple. You can essentially see there's no colour apart from the apple because the point of the image is to draw your eyes to the apple, which takes up the main frame of the picture. Very nice to see the staff of Golden Kimmy also incorporating that. I normally say that when they use it, it's to show you that something isn't quite right, something isn't quite real, and it's a bit off kilter. Because when Yoshiro is in this kind of state of mind, he's not in reality anymore. He's seeing his own reality. He, did, he then sees Hitchikata behind him and he ends up running away. So he kind of starts to run away from Hitchikata because he recognises him as a Shinsengumi. Dick Sensei even praises the skill of the old man and his strength and he even says, do you want to recruit him? But Hitchikata says, no, I'm not going to persuade him. He's already. And it cuts off to him running and it leads us into quite a sombre moment now. It does seem that Yoshiro is living through his past still. So he keeps seeing these visions and he sees a vision of his sensei and the betrayal of his sensei. So we know that this man, he was killing for his sensei he believed it was the right thing to do and he was doing it all for the sake that he believed in the vision of his sensei and it ends up that he's used by him and he ends up being left to die and it's a very poignant moment and we, obviously golden kamui is king of being able to do the 360s so one minute we're laughing our heads off the next minute we're crying our eyes out because it's very very poignant and it is a very poignant scene it, it goes from him being tied up on the ground crying to his sensei to him crying into the floor and there is a deer or a, st a stag i believe it is a stag standing over him looking down at him and it's a very poignant moment it does also remind me of i think it's back in season two where a serpent says if you see a bear or i think it might be with Incomet where she sees bears and she says that it's a sign that she's about to die so it did remind me of that so perhaps the stag this time being the Nemru Ainu's stand-in for the bear. Maybe they have an animal themselves, though they put that in, and that also kind of means something very similar, where it's just staring at him as he's crying into the ground, and he says, I don't want to commit seppuku, where Hijikata catches up with him, and it does turn into a little bit of a poignant chase. There isn't much music at this point but it's about to come and kick in and that's when obviously when it kicks in it, it has more of an impact it's him running from Hijikata but it's just how graceful Hijikata is walking towards him and in his eyes he's walking down these staircase towards and we end up at the shoreline Yoshiro is facing the ocean and he has a sword in his hand and this is where the music starts to change and the music gets more poignant and it gets a little bit choral so we know that something is about to happen and I figured it would be the end of Yoshiro that we would focus in on. Hijikata then has quite a nice little monologue where he starts to talk about history and looking back upon history where some people might even think that the manslayer, what he believed in, would have been correct. He starts to tell us about how Japanese, Japan modernised, it started to grow into a new era and he says that Hokkaido needs to become an independent to protect it from the north. The, the line which probably means the most here is, I'm still fighting for Japan. Yoshiro just says, I'm tired, and he pulls out his sword, and we see Hijikata also go in to pull his sword. And they both pull the sword roughly at the same time, but it's Hijikata who hits first. I can't show too much of the sequence because there's a lot of blood flying around. Yoshiro slumping to the floor, 
we see Hijikata quickly make, taking his chance before it's too late to ask him about the beak. The beak kind of was a bit of a red herring for Hijikata, but at the same time, he does end up with the tattoos. It wasn't all for nothing. His wife gave Yoshiro the beak to remember Nemuru by, so he would never forget the place. Hijikata asks him, allow me to end your suffering. Yoshiro says, no, you need to leave me be because I am not worthy of a quick, easy death because I killed the emperor, I've killed many. And we get to find out that Ainu means human, where he was able to live his life for a bit as a human. He looks up before him and he sees his wife. And we start to see his eyes just fading out. And then as they fade to white, a bird flies away, which is very symbolic. And the idea that his soul has left his body, it's flying away, that death has come. We don't really need to see too much more. And it doesn't really focus in on him now because we just cut back to Hijikata having a bit of a quiet moment where Hitchcock says, I can still run. I still have a job to do. And it's a really quiet moment, so the music then stops. And then it's ruined by our, of course, the king of headshots himself, Ogata. It always, they always seem to have a way, this season in particular, we'll go to something really quiet, and then suddenly we cut to an animal, and I'm like, oh no, the animal's going to die. Boom! Headshot. Ogata is here. Ogata this time, I think he's killing a beluga, because they do say it's a whale. So I think he is killing a beluga whale where it breaks the silence, it breaks the atmosphere and it obviously takes us to our final section, our final sequence. The guys are eating the whale meat and it's just, we get a really nice moment where Shiraishi's like, the whale meat would go well with some miso, but we're not going to find any here in Russia. A syrup has Sugumoto's miso. I, ah, oh, <laughs> it's so sad. And it's just the way she's like, I was just holding on to it. Because he's got so much stuff that he needs to carry. Of course you were holding on to it. We know that you love this stuff. We know you love it, really. And they end up making a whale soup. I don't tend to like anything fishy. I, I kind of don't eat fish. But even I thought this looked quite yummy. And I probably wouldn't eat it. But at the same time, it did look quite yummy. And the whale soup is made using the last of Sugimoto's mi miso. Where Asurupa says that she won't get any more miso because it has to be Sugimoto's. I just love that. It's just... The main thing I really want so badly right now is for her to finally meet face to face with Sugimoto. I just don't think I'm going to get my wish anytime soon. Agata, I thought I died. I actually thought I died when I heard him say this. Agata says Hina. I, a Sirupa may also be completely knocked sideways. I was there too. I was like, wait, what did he just say? And she even says, repeat it. Say it again. Say it again. And it's just silent. It's just silent. It's like, he doesn't say it again. He says it once and he says it twice. So we know that Ogata really enjoys this soup. But I, I thought I had gone deaf. I thought, I was like, I didn't hear that right, did I? And yeah, I did hear that. Ogata says Hina. Whilst this little sequence of them, uh, of Sirupa trying to persuade Ogata to say it once more, Shiraishi asks Kiro, how long are we going to stay here? Because obviously we're not here just to have an interview with that prisoner, are we? This is probably the setup now for our finale, the finale of season three. I can't believe we're nearly at the end of season three. It's flown by, it really has, but it also feels like we've learned a lot of details this season. And the plan is to get Sophia out, but we can't just get her out on her own. The plan is to get all 250 prisoners to escape at the same time. This really is prison break round two. And we ended season two on a prison break. Are we going to end season three on a prison break? Quite interesting. Golden Kamui prison break edition, where they are going to use the escape, escaping 250 prisoners to get Sophia out of it and use it as a distraction. So you're, you've got more chance of her being able to escape whilst there's plenty of people for the guards to go chasing after. The plan is to destroy the walls at multiple points and they are going to be getting their bombs from the lighthouse behind them which has explosive supplies just in case Japan ever attacked them once again. Next week's episode is revolutionary. It's definitely a change of pace of an episode. I think it's been done intentionally just to kind of slow down the plot a bit because we have now got four episodes and obviously they don't want to drag it out too much so we're going to have this little insert here where we obviously get to touch base with Dick Sensei and Hitchcatter. As much as it felt like a, a wild goose chase and a red herring, they did end up getting the tattoos from um, Yoshiro. We also get a nice sequence where we get to learn about one of the prisoners. All these prisoners may just have their tattoos and a lot of people in the Golden Kimura universe see them as nothing more than I want that tattoo. But we are reminded that all of these prisoners who have got these tattoos, they all have their own stories to tell. They are all humans at the end of the day. They all have 
their own memories and their own regrets at the same time. So very nice episode, I think. The end sequence is very important as it sets up, I think, the finale where we're going to be going now. It's just going to be interesting to see if there is a... You, a reuniting of the groups with Sugimoto as Sirapa. How is it going to end? Are we just going to end on them breaking Sophia out or is something more going to happen? Because it does feel like we've got four episodes left and they could easily kind of give us a few more episodes with Sugimoto catching up but and then do the prison break in two. Or are we going to really draw it out and just focus in on this prison break with the team of Sirapa? Going to be very interesting to see where it goes from. I am really enjoying the third season of Golden Camille. I do hope that whenever season four does decide to show its face that we don't have to wait two years like you guys had to with, between season two and three. I binge watched it so I haven't had to do the long waiting game just yet so this will be my t my time finally going into the waiting game. I mean I could technically pick up the manga so that is a thing. We do have a discord server guys and you guys can Go over, check it out. I use it for you guys just to get a notification whenever a video is released up on YouTube. But you can also talk to me, ask a few bits and pieces. It is my place as well to tell you guys if there's a delay. It, there's also a Q&A section where you guys can ask me any questions you randomly pop up with and will come into your brain. But thank you for you guys using Discord because that is also where I was able to ask a little question. Obviously, I had a question in my head. I was quite nervous asking it because I didn't really want any spoilers. The person I asked was absolutely amazing and didn't give me any spoilers, so fantastic. I simply asked, has Golden Kamui ended and where are you in relation with the manga? So just, I wanted to know how far ahead the manga was and how much manga there was. So I was curious if there was enough to do any more seasons. So thank you so much for doing it in a way that didn't spoil anything. I do know that you are unfinished, so Golden Kamui is still being released don't know how quick it's being released, but it is being released and there is still definitely enough for a couple of seasons. So it will be interesting to see how quick the new seasons come out and also how, I guess, in regards to how quick the manga is being released. So obviously they don't want to catch up too quickly and I don't really want to see them forcing an ending. So I would rather wait than wait for the manga to come to a close before ending the anime. I am so glad that I managed to pick up and persuade myself to watch Golden Kamui. Fun fact for you guys, when I first asked somebody what Golden Kamui was about, they said bears. I literally had one word to go off. They just said it was about bears. I mean, to be fair, there's some bears in this anime. It's not really about bears. I ended up leaving Golden Kamui on the shelf for two years because I was like, I don't want to watch something about bears. I'm not that interested in bears. But then I kept seeing it having this really high score on places like my anime list and it was getting eights and I was like, to be fair, if something gets an eight on my anime list, it tends to be pretty decent. So I sat down a week before season three was due to air and I binge watched the entire two seasons, fell in love with the anime itself, absolutely adored it. So yes, occasionally I do forget things or because I binge watched it, things aren't 100% nailed into my head. So sometimes I do forget about that episode in season two, blah, blah, blah. It happens, guys. I will definitely be re-watching it at some point just because I've had so much fun with it. So do make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. If you have found me for the first time, hello, welcome to the Noodle Bowl. I am your host, Clockwork Dandy Noodles. I generally just use my videos to break down a few bits I find interesting, talk about the anime as a whole, go through the main points of the episode. I do like to think that my videos evolve over time, so we, I evolve as I get more and more comfortable about talking about animes in general. Also, depending on what anime video you pick, they are very different. If you are a follower of my Moriarty series, that is a lot more of a his history breakdown and that's a lot heavier. Those episodes also tend to be like double the length of all my other videos, so different things going on on the channel. Soon, guys, I will be releasing my winter 2021 anime list. I will be releasing a video on what I am going to be watching. What am I going to be releasing in YouTube form? So make sure you are subscribed to see if I'm releasing on anything that you too are going to be watching. I have a feeling that a few of the videos I will do will definitely appeal to a few of you guys because I have picked up a couple of sequels to release next season. And obviously I think the winter season is going to be all about sequels. Make sure you guys are subscribed so you do not miss out on that. And again, thank you to anybody who has followed me across. This is my second anime season of releasing on YouTube. Very, very excited. I, it feels like a tiny little marker for me. We'll be going into our winter season. Cannot wait to see what animes and what the anime season brings. It does look a little bit quieter. I will see you guys again next week. Monday, Tuesday, Moriarty, The Patriot. 
Tuesday, we get our Golden Kamui videos. Wednesday mornings tends to be Ikebukuro Westgate Park. Wednesday afternoons, you've got your Noblies. And you've got Friday, Saturday, you have Journey of Elena. I hope you guys are staying safe. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.